Here are 10 mistakes that I made when studying my first foreign language so that you can avoid making the same mistakes. Now the language in question here is Swedish, but that doesn't matter. None of the mistakes are specific to that language, so you can take the advice here and apply it to whatever language you're studying. Now it is going to sound like some of these are sort of opposed to one another, and that's just because achieving anything in life is about finding the right balance. So counting from 10 to 1, new show of it. Mistake number 10 was to think that there's some kind of end date to this, like someday I would just wake up and just sort of know Swedish. Now I think this is one that a lot of people know in theory is incorrect. They know that if they chase fluency it'll be a moving goalpost, but they still do it anyway. They just sort of think, well if I was twice as fluent as I am now then I'd be satisfied. Well from the first time I ever thought that, I'm probably four or five times as fluent now as I was then, and let me tell you that all having that level of the language does, it just renders you more aware of all the things that you don't know. With one of the mistakes later, I'll get into what a more helpful attitude is. Mistake number nine was too much Duolingo. You didn't really think you were going to get through this whole video without me ragging on Duolingo, did you? Good, because you're not. Now to be fair to Duolingo, along with italki, it is responsible for my Swedish speaking hobby. But the thing is, back then when I was using it a lot, it was a lot better than it is now. It's actually gotten worse. These days it's much more about huge amounts of repetition that aren't actually helpful and it really just encourages more use of Duolingo. I've said before that a good language learning app encourages a good use of your time. Duolingo doesn't, it encourages lots of Duolingo. Now the defense that I often hear back for Duolingo is one of my main sources of comments, so I'm not going to tell you what it is. Joking, I will tell you what it is and why it's wrong. People say that they're only using it as a supplement to their other learning, reading, movies, whatever. Okay, I guess, but I don't think it's even a good supplement. I don't get why you wouldn't chase a better supplement. You want the best possible input at all times. I would say that there are even better supplements, ones that are not only more useful but also more engaging. And I think this is often used as an excuse when we don't even realize it's an excuse for that little kind of social media-ish pleasure hit that we get from stuff like Duolingo and Instagram and whatnot. I would probably suggest something like Pod101, Link, or even Mango Languages. All of them have their drawbacks, but in the end I think there's a higher concentration of words and phrases, and if I'd done more of those things and less Duolingo, I would speak better Swedish today. Mistag Nummer 8 was to have too many conversations without enough input in between those conversations. Now in the input purists world, you wouldn't start speaking nearly as early as I did anyway, but to very briefly summarize my beef with this theory, it's that it doesn't allow enough wiggle room for the learner's personality. But either way, whichever side of the argument you're on, you definitely shouldn't do something like I did in early 2019, which was to have 100 hours of Swedish conversation in 40 days. Yes, okay, I got a little bit more confident and maybe ironed out a few mistakes that I was corrected on, but I didn't really learn how to say anything new. I didn't learn to comprehend any more than I had before because the majority of that time I was only hearing myself speak. Now I don't think speaking a lot is a bad idea per se, but at a minimum you want to be getting as much input as you are outputting. So if you want to have a hundred hours of conversation, by all means do it, but first you want to be understanding most if not all of what you hear and you also want to be getting at least 100 hours of input in between those 100 hours of conversation, preferably 200. By the way, this list is ordered 10 to 1, with 10 being the least damaging thing to my language learning and 1 being the most damaging thing. Now, obviously it doesn't work to quantify damage, but that's basically what we're going for. Mistake number 7 is sort of an extension of the last one, which is that when I was having all these conversations, it took me a year to start paying for tutors rather than just using language partners. Now, whenever I mention spending money on this channel, someone from a developing country takes offense because it sounds like I think that everyone has a lot of money. I don't think that, okay? I am talking to the main viewership of this channel, which is people like myself in rich Western countries who generally have a little bit of money to spare but will often hang on to it quite irrationally. That's who I'm talking to. And in fact, I have mentioned before that italki should give all the very low cost teachers from places like Bangladesh and Paraguay a basically a break on their pricing 
And I repeat, they should do that. If you've got money to spend on tutors, do that rather than using language partners. Do it especially early on and use language partners later on when you get better. Trust me. Mistake number six was spending time trying to learn to understand either dialects or very similar languages. Now for me it was Norwegian but for whatever language you're studying there is probably a very similar language or a dialect of that language that is 100% intelligible to native speakers of your language but to anyone not yet advanced in that language it will be basically meaningless noise. An example in English is Scottish English. I might use your Wi-Fi and your lobby then, mate, and the websites I visit, that is between me and my browsing cookies. The temptation here is to think that if you want to be as close as possible to a native speaker, which I did and I still do, then you will have to learn to understand everything that a native speaker can understand. Now, it sounds logical and in the long run, it's true. But the reality is that with a dialect or even a language as similar as Norwegian and Swedish are, the native speaker of, say, Swedish can understand Norwegian so easily, not because it's so similar, but because all the things that are similar are immediately passed, like they don't even have to think about them. So they've got all their attention to give to the things that are different and figure out what is being said. But you as a student, unless you are a very advanced student, cannot do that. And it will actually not be a good use of your time to try and understand new words and phrases that don't exist in the language that you're studying. A little bit like learning to juggle, you wouldn't learn to juggle five at once. You would start with two, go to three, and then step that up four and five. If you do it any other way, it's going to take longer. Mistake number five was to assume that kids material would be easy to understand. It's not. It's a little bit hard to explain why this is and one day I'll do a whole video on it. But if you think about a show like In the Night Garden or The Teletubbies, they both seem to have been written by someone who was smoking something. And they're going to be hard to follow because there's no inherent logic in them. Adults material has inherent logic in it. The upshot is don't be discouraged if you can't understand something like Ronja Röverdotter. Now I can understand this now, I re it's actually okay, but I remember buying it a bit over two years ago just thinking I did buy the Swedish one, right? Remember that even if it's written for 10 year olds and does actually follow a logical progression of events, it's still written for people who have had 10 thousand hours exposure to the language. Mistake number four leads on from that, which is not reading the things that I was actually interested in, slash assuming that things that I wanted to read would be too hard. Now, when you look at your first paragraph of reading in a foreign language, it's very daunting because you don't understand that your brain won't be in the same place in a couple of pages as the one it's in now. You can picture this a little bit like pushing a car through the mud in order to then get in it and go for a 200 mile drive. Except that, imagine when you're pushing it, you assume that the whole 200 miles has to be pushed through the mud and therefore you assume that it's impossible. The reality is that after even a page or two of reading, you will get a lot better at sorting what is relevant from what is irrelevant and what you understand from what you don't understand. It's not that you get much better at the language in that time, but you get better at just quickly sorting and just sort of going on anyway. Even if you only understand three words in four, which is actually a fairly low density, this should be enough to get you out of the mud, so to speak. And my personal tip for this when you're getting started is to read along with the audiobook. Now this has all kinds of benefits anyway, the main one being pronunciation, obviously. But what we're interested in for beginners is that the audiobook serves as a kind of pacer. You can't get stuck on certain words or phrases and just spend ages trying to work out what they mean because the audiobook keeps going, so you'll have to keep going too. Mistake number three was to not prioritize language learning for the day. My advice, do it in the morning. Don't tell me that you're not a morning person. Okay, for 10 years, I didn't think I was a morning person until I started getting up in the morning and I realized I was a morning person. I'd just never been awake to experience that. If your language learning isn't that big a priority for you, I get that, that's okay. But if it is a priority for you, then do it prior to everything else. 
makes sense, right? And here's something I've discovered about doing language learning first. When I do language learning first, everything else gets done as well. But when I do everything else first, language learning doesn't happen. It's like quantum mechanics. It's weird, but it works. Mistake number two was to have month-based or achievement-based goals for the language rather than hours-based goals for the language. Now, I'm not saying that all plans that involve achieving a certain thing or reading a certain book in the language are bad, but I do think everyone should be counting the number of hours they spend in the language. And if nothing else, if you do nothing else, counting the number of hours spent in the language will advance you in that language. It's nigh on impossible to spend a thousand hours deliberately immersed in a language without making significantly significant progress in that language. Whereas it's very possible to tick achievements off a list and never really get anywhere. Now, my original goal for this year was 280 hours of Swedish, but that was when I was still studying French at the same time. Now I'm not doing that anymore. I've just passed 300 hours of Swedish for the year. So my new goal is 600. Which brings me to mistake number one, which was to take up French when my Swedish was still at a low level. Now, this is a very personal thing. I know that some people want to speak 20 languages to a low level. If that's your thing, that's fine. That doesn't happen to be my thing. But the mistakes that I made when I took up French were one, to think that my Swedish was better than it really was, and two, to not listen to what I really wanted. I knew deep down that what I really wanted was to speak Swedish to a high level. But I made a mistake that we all make from time to time, which is to let external factors decide what I should be doing and why. Don't make the same mistake. Don't let anyone tell you that you should be learning a certain language or to what level or why. If you want to learn 30 languages to a low level, then do that. But don't do it because you saw some bullcrap polyglot produce a scripted video. Do it because that's what you want for yourself. Anyway, guys, if you found that helpful, then leave me a comment and subscribe. Not because that's what I want for you, but because that's what you want for you. <laughs> See ya.